Hey guys, Dan with Kane Custom Garage. Yes, it's me. <laughs> I shaved my beard, so I look a little different. But it's grown back. It's grown back. Just settle down. But anyways, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to properly package a chainsaw for shipping. You know, over the years, we've shipped probably hundreds of chainsaws. We used to sell a lot of them on eBay, and I've received a few on eBay, and so I've seen what can go wrong when they're not packaged properly and uh, I know how to package them so that they get there without being damaged and like I said we've packaged you know probably hundreds of them and I don't think I've ever had a damage claim on one of them so anyways let me show you how I do it okay guys so today I'm gonna ship this chainsaw for Eric hotbox pizza truck the XL 12 with the shotgun exhaust so we got to ship that guy to Florida and so um, I was just gonna show you what you know what you do as far as draining the fluids getting it all broke down and ready to go but first you got to take a drink of your coffee mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> yummy and everybody's sick in our house just like everybody else in the nation so I don't know if it's the Rona or what, but at this point, does it really matter? And so anyways, I might be a <coughs> coughing and a little bit of <coughs> So anyways, just don't mind that. Don't mind that. You can't catch it from me. <laughs> so, first thing we got to do is we got to get the barn chain off of this thing. Because obviously we're not going to ship it with the barn chain on it. I've been working on my Promac 1010. I want to get that thing running properly, and then I got my other two out. We're gonna have a little Pro, Ma a little Mac 1010 party here before long. But anyways, so let's take and get this barn chain off of here. And of course, I don't have the right size socket over here. Ugh. Yeah, these home lights—they got the big old. 5 8 takes a big 5 8 socket. So we're just going to break her down. Take this barn chain off. And unfortunately, these 20 inch barn chains, I'm going to have to ship it separately because I don't think it's going to fit in the box. But that's fine. It's just better that way. If you try and stuff it in the box, it just causes problems. I've seen them sticking out the side of the box and all kinds of crazy stuff. So let's pop this guy off. Hold the chain, get that off. We'll make sure she's halfway clean for Eric. She got some stuff in there from our test cuts. Oh, that's a nice saw though, isn't it? He's gonna love it. Okay, so then you put your bar plates and your side cover back on. Along with all the nuts. And then just put those back on there. And you can just sort of get them snug on there so the so the side cover's not rattling around. That's the main thing on shipping stuff is you don't want anything to move. You don't want stuff flopping around. Anything that's loose or flopping, if it gets jarred, it'll break. So just tighten those up a little bit. There. Okay, so here's our power head. And then here's our barn chain. Let me wipe some of the oil off of that. So we'll put this over here. Put our chain over here. Now we gotta drain the fluids. So first, we'll start with the oil. And the oil is pretty clean in this because I just put it in. 
so I don't want to waste it, so I'm going to reuse it. And so what I like to do is you get you some of these paint filter filters that you can get from the paint store. And you just take your funnel and put it in there and then you can just dump it right through that. And then it'll get any garbage in there that's that's gonna that might be in there. So we'll dump out the oil. But yeah, it's funny how I've gotten a couple of chainsaws shipped to me and they still had oil and gas in them. It's like, you can't do that. And it's like, it's amazing that um, they actually got shipped because a lot of times, you know, FedEx or the post office or whatever, if there's fuel leaking out of it, they'll pull it to the side and it'll sit there for who knows how long or if, if they'll even ship it. And then they put it in this special bag and all this stuff because they're like, oh my God, it's leaking fuel. And so yeah, just get as much of the oil out as you can. I mean, you don't have to get every single drop. It's not like it's gonna leak in everywhere. And like some guys get crazy and they'll put like a little piece of paper towel in there and stuff, but that's, that's not necessary. <laughs> As long as it's drained. Okay, so there's our oil. Yeah, see it caught some garbage in there. Okay. And then the same thing with the fuel. I ain't wasting that fuel, that's good fuel. So I'm gonna save it. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the fuel. Now if it was now if it's an old chainsaw that I just got like from a yard sale or something, then yeah, I'll just dump the fuel in a dump it in a, one of my old cans there. And then I always try to like I'll use a little bit of it maybe like to when we're starting a fire or something. Try and burn a little bit of it here and there. Okay, so now. We'll take a new fuel or a new paint filter and then we'll drain the fuel too. She's a gurgling. Oh yeah, that fuel's still nice and clean. It should be, I just put it in there. And the tank was really clean on this one. So yeah, just get as much as you can out. Oh! My can overflowed. I was wondering why my gut was getting all wet. She's a little full. That's all right. Let me soak some of that up with this rag. Yummy. Okay, fuel's drained. And just make sure the lid's on nice and tight. And then wipe off any excess, give her a wipe down. Oh, that thing's a beaut. Isn't that cool how it blued the muffler and everything? Eric, th Eric thought that was a that was his idea to just leave it raw steel and have it blued, have it blue like that. It looks cool. Maybe I'll take one of these and do like a, use some of that bluing compound that they use that cold blue stuff that they use on guns. That'd be sort of cool too. Okay, she's ready. So, fluids are drained, and I wasn't gonna. You know, as far as the fuel in the carburetor, I'm just going to leave it that way. It'll make it easier for him to start when he gets it. It's not going to leak anywhere. Okay. So let's talk about boxes. So just find yourself a nice sturdy box. Like I got lucky this one, this is the box that that Predator engine came in that we put on that um, chipper last year, the year before. This is a nice heavy box, it's double lined and it's got 
this egg cart and stuff in the bottom. But, uh, <clears throat> and I've actually shipped a saw. I shipped a, a saw to uh, um, Jeff at Caveman Saws. I shipped a saw and he used the same box to ship it back. Look at that box, it's still nice. So I'm gonna use it again. Let's see, and so first, let's see how this fits in there before we put any packaging. Oh yeah. And so that's the thing you wanna look at. You know, make sure your box isn't too big for the saw, but make sure it's not too small either. This is perfect because you got room for padding and all that. But I mean, you don't want it to so big that the saw is just gonna flop around in there either. And we'll probably, we're gonna end up cutting this saw down, or cutting this box down probably because this, um, you know, it'll just hold the saw tighter and it, and it won't cost as much for shipping. So anyways, so this is a perfect box for that. And so what I like to do is take one of these, one of these eight cent shopping bags, cause here in, here in Washington state, they charge us eight cents for shopping bags now. Cause they don't like plastic shopping bags. So just put her in a little bag like that. In case it does leak something. And then we're gonna take a look in Santa's bag over here and see what we got for shipping materials. And that's another thing, that's another one of my pet peeves is, you know, you can buy all these shipping, shipping material and bubble wrap and all this stuff at Home Depot, but it's like, man, so much of that stuff gets thrown away. If you're resourceful, you can find loads of this stuff, like if you go to your, your local body shop or, you know, any place like that. But body shops are good because they always get big parts and there's always tons of bubble wrap and stuff. And so we always used to stop by our body, the local body shop every Monday because that's when they'd get all their parts. And they'd always have tons of bubble wrap and, and uh, stuff like that. But anyways, our supplies are getting sort of thin here. We got sort of slim pickings. This is sort of some dirty old bubble wrap. Hmm, I wonder what else I got. Let's go see what else we got. Okay. So yeah, I went and found some more stuff. Some more packaging materials. So yeah, like I said, um, you know, there's so much packaging material in the world that gets thrown away. You're bound to find some, like Christina was buying these meal kits for a while. And they came in these fancy little insulated, you know, boxes. So yeah, look at that. That's perfect for putting a chainsaw in. But I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, so we got it in its bag. We gonna put it right in this. Oh, that's perfect. And then this box, you know, the other thing to consider is make sure you got something in the bottom of the box that's gonna take up some of the shocks. So like if the UPS man drops the box, it doesn't bust the bottom of your chainsaw. But yeah, so yeah. Just wrap that bad boy up just like this. Look at that. It's a perfect little package. And then you shove that in here, like that. Oh, let me drag it back out just to show you. So the other thing to consider, so like see how you got those, see how you got those bucking spikes on the front of these chainsaws? So you can either take it off, which I'm not gonna do, or if you grab like some foam like this, or just any kind of foam or something and just take it and stick it on the front of those bucking spikes and just stick it on there just like that and then when you wrap it up it'll hold it against the bucking spikes because those always end up poking through the box but the nice thing is this is a nice double double layer box so and it's in there at an angle, so it's gonna have a hard time busting through there. And so, so see now, 
your saws in there nice and secure. See, it's pretty tight, but we still have these voids in the corners here. So just take yourself some paper or whatever. Take your garbage from your house, stuff it in all the corners. Cause that's the main thing. You do not want the saw to move in here. I've, like I said, I've, I've gotten some. There's this one lady on eBay. <clears throat> Bless her heart. She still has stuff on there, but every time she'd ship me a saw, she would just throw it in the box with no packaging or padding or anything. And so it would just be flopping around in there. And a couple of times they came broken and it was really annoying. So yeah, it's like just take some stuff and pack it in there so that thing can't move, see? It ain't going nowhere. So yeah, take your, like Andrew, he always, he uses like his, he does a pretty good job. He uses like his old feed bags and chicken feed bags and just whatever you can throw in there. See, here's a little, little bubble wrap thing. Stick that in the top, what the heck? Okay, so the saw's in there pretty secure, right? But the box is really too tall. So we gon' we gon' knock the size of that box down a little bit. If I can find a utility knife around here. Oh, oh now I gotta find a utility knife. Hello? Are you filming? Yeah. I should cut that out. I will. I need a I need a utility knife. Okay, I found a knife. So since this box is a little tall for this saw, we're going to first of all Yeah, there's no way that I was gonna say sometimes if the bar is short enough, you can stick it in at a diagonal, but yeah, that ain't gonna work. That ain't happening. So that's just the that's just the way the cookie crumbles. So I always just take and slit the corners whoosh, like that. Slit the corner. Slit the corner. Slit the corner. And then when you want to fold your cardboard down sort of gauge how tall you need it to be and then you just score the cardboard with with the knife like this and that way it'll bend see watch look at that just like that and score this whoops wow that box is heavy duty it's gonna take a little more just a little more. There we go. Fold that in. Fold that in. And see, this will save you some money on shipping too because the bigger the box, the more it costs. So try and get your box, you know, as small as you need it to be, but not too small. And fold that in. See, this is a nice little package here. Fold that in. Okay, now, and you just put some tape on it. And don't sp don't skimp on the tape either. Don't be afraid to put a lot of tape on it. So see, we're gonna put our new shipping label right over that, so there'll be no confusion. So see, look at that. That's a nice, that's a nice package there. 
and the way you can tell that saw is going to be safe is grab the box and shake it. If nothing moves in there, you're good. See, look at that. That thing is indestructible. It ain't going to get hurt. Okay. So just a little more tape there. And then when you're using a used box, they only, they only tape maybe once on the bottom. This one has staples. So I always re-tape the bottom too. Because that's all you need is bottom to fall out while they're trying to carry it. So you give that a good taping too. Look at that. That thing is stout, solid. Okay, so there's the chainsaw. And then as far as the barn chain goes, I always like to take a little cardboard and fold it up. I'll show you that next. Okay guys, now let's do this barn chain. And so what I like to do is put the chain separate, like take one of your one of your uh, Amazon bags or something like that that you get in the mail all the time. And just sort of flop your chain in there. Sort of lengthen it out a little bit. So it's long and skinny, sort of. Get in there. And then just fold her up. Ah, dirty. Dirt everywhere. And then... And then for this bar, maybe we'll wrap it in a little paper, something like that. And then what we're gonna do is take take a box or any piece of cardboard and break her down flat because all you're trying to do is just protect the bar from getting beat up and sticking out the box basically and I hate that when you see when you see guys when they ship like axes and chainsaw bars and stuff like that, they'll wrap the whole frickin' thing in duct tape and it's like a giant pain in the ass to get all that off. And the duct tape really doesn't do a whole lot to protect it. And so anyways, so you take your bar, and put it on the cardboard like this, and then you sort of take a look at it. So let's see. Let's go like this. So I'm gonna I want the I'm gonna fold this over like this. So I'm gonna take and cut that here, here, and then I'm gonna notch it down here. Jeez, this thing's dull. Same thing here. Notch. So now we got a little shape like this. And then, since I have some of this foam laying around, I'm gonna take and put some there. some here because the ends will try to poke out of the um, cardboard and then you just let's see how do we want to do this fold the ends over first like this and then you fold this end over so see you've got like a a thin, what you end up with is a thin, flat box. So just try and tuck.
lock everything in. Fold, fold, just like that. See? Now you got like a nice flat box. Put some tape on it. Just to hold it. Put the ends shut. Like that. And it's really not gonna cost you that much more if it's a wide flat box than if it was just more the size of the bar. And this way it's protected a lot better. So, you end up with something like this. And then you just tape the heck out of it. You know, just tape up all your seams and edges. And stuff like that that's gonna stick out. Maybe go along here. Couple more around the middle. Whoop, whoop. Oh, come on. Oh, you screwed that up. <laughs> and then yeah, I'll have, and then I'll have Christina, Christina prints the labels online, and, uh, and then we just take it up FedEx and drop it off. So there's our package, or our packages, one chainsaw, one bar and chain, and then I got Mr. Steven Letts' saw left to do, but I still need Christina to pinstripe it, so we're gonna get it pinstriped and then we'll um, get that one ready to ship off Steven, so this one's next. And I already shipped Andrew's, his is on his way to Canada. The Pro Mac 55's on its way to Canada. This going to Florida. That's going to Steven. So yeah. Hopefully that helps you guys out, because I know people are shipping chainsaws a lot these days. So, that's how I do it. Hope you find it helpful. Okay, thanks guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.